Hey, it's Darren with Rushing Labs. Uh, today we're going to be talking about CSS modules inside of Create React App. I believe I promised this video a while back. I've been away for a while, but I'm creating videos again. Um, and this is something that I've been excited about ever since the idea of web components was first introduced, um, I guess you could say, to web development. Um, roughly four to five years ago with, uh, with all the new JavaScript frameworks that were starting to come out. Um, this is before React started to take off, way before Vue was even a thing. Um, just had this idea of componentization and one of the big uh, things that everyone was excited for was the idea of scoping your CSS uh, locally to a to some sort of component idea rather than just having it global and having to deal with all of these um, overlayment and kind of just the the cascading part of CSS um, so this is something that um, definitely not a strong suit for me but something that I've been excited about so let's go ahead and jump in all right, I'd like to first start off this video with a little bit of an explanation of what we're gonna get into before diving straight into the code. Um, so as you see here, we're going over three things, uh, th or three things, inline CSS, something that I'm calling organized inline. So this is um, a little bit better than inline CSS, but not quite CSS modules or CSS and JS or anything like that. And then the actual CSS modules. Um, so up here with inline CSS, this is just the, bare bones, get your feet underneath you, how you apply styles to some HTML element, or I guess you could say JSX element, um, inside of React or JSX. Um, this gets you, like I said, a style on an element and absolutely nothing else. It's very tedious, um, very verbose, and can get pretty dirty pretty quickly. Moving on to what I'm calling organized inline, instead of creating up here an inline CSS, we created an anonymous object and just shoved it directly into the style attribute. Um, instead, we're taking that anonymous object out, giving it a name, so it's no longer anonymous. And but we're still, but then we have you know this nested object structure. But still, we still have the style, the style attribute, um, and we. But now we have a little bit of dot syntax that we can take advantage of. So styles dot blue stuff. So you're still inline styles. You're still inline CSS, but it's a little bit better organized because it is technically a JSON object. Um, it is JavaScript. You can do imports and you can manage it. You have a little bit of the tooling that JavaScript brings you um, inside of your styles. But like I said before, it's not quite CSS and JS. Um, and it's definitely a far cry from styled components or anything like that. And then finally, we have CSS modules. Mm -hmm. Now CSS modules is what the, the kind of the, the core of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I, for brevity's sake, I've removed the file declaration from um, this my component dot module dot CSS. Don't worry about the dot module just yet. And then below we also have a my component dot JS. Um, so this is regular vanilla CSS syntax that you've already seen. Um, a class of blue stuff, just to continue our example. And then color is blue, that sort of thing. Okay, cool. So then we're using an import, an import statement to actually pull our style sheet into our React component. Um, okay, so we're putting it under the name styles. And then come down here, we still have just a div, a regular element like we've been dealing with before. And then, but now we have access to class name. Because we declared a class, we can actually apply it with the class name attribute. And so, but then we still have the dot syntax. So we can go styles, since we imported as a styles, and then dot blue stuff. So this is where you start to see a little a bit of what has quote unquote auto magically happened is that our style sheet was transformed somehow into a little bit of, a, of, of, of JavaScript uh, sugar syntax so that now we can dot into our class, um, into our style sheet classes and we can apply them to our elements programmatically. So this is a little bit of what's happening under the scenes or, or this is what the, the pre-configured web pack um, part of Create React App is enabling for us. So, all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the code. I just created a new uh, Create React App um, application or project, I guess you could say. Um, so it's already running. This is just the uh, regular npx Create React App command. Um, <clears throat> if you want to see how to do that, you can see uh, one of my older videos right here. I'll put it in the card up there. Um, all right, so just to show you that it's running, um, this is basic, straight, straight out of the box. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff that comes with it um, out of the box. Um, switch that over to JSX. Let's see, we don't need this logo anymore. Um, all right, and then let's get a header going. There we go. 
All right, update it. Cool, CSS modules. Okay, and let's throw a div. Um, I don't know. All right, so we've got a header, we've got a div with a paragraph in it. So we've got stuff down here, CSS modules. Okay, um, first thing, let's go into the inline styles. Uh, let's try that, the very first one where you just throw, just throw in CSS around. So just like this, so we create a style attribute directly on our HTML element. Um, we have a nested object. Um, let's see, and then I believe we were trying to change it to blue. Okay. And then we can see, yep, text turned to blue. Um, pretty straightforward, just to show you what that looks like in the dev tools. Um, oh. okay, anyway, it's gonna be kind of hard to see on screen, but as you can see right here, I use a little select the element selector, grab this right here, go back to dev tools, and you can see that the color was changed to blue, and they've got style colored blue right there inside of the DOM I pre live. Okay, now moving over to what I was calling organized inline. Um, okay, so text, now just to reset this, um, go back to there. Okay, and we're back to our default. So now what I'm going to do is come up here. Create a new object. Oh, if I can type. Let's see. And I'm gonna call this blue stuff. Following our previous pre, uh, previous example. There we go. Okay. And then coming down here, we're still gonna use a style tag. But then now we can dot into our styles and use blue stuff. Save that, and we have blue text. Um, so this isn't quite as bad as just having everything stuck right inside of all of your CSS, stuck right inside of here. Um, so you, you've got a little bit of organization. Like, um, you can also come in here, you know, so the benefit of the organization begins whenever you want to do stuff like this. Um, so you say you want to make it red, so let's actually go ahead and do that. Let's try to, let's see what happens if we use our red stuff down here. And then boom, so our text down there becomes red. Um, so you can see that we don't really have, um, you know, we, we, we don't have the, the CSS directly in line with all of here. It's still technically in line styles, but it's better organized up here. So if you really wanted to, um, you could pull this into a separate JavaScript, um, JavaScript file and you could do imports and you could begin to do those sorts of things. But it's still a pretty naive, pretty heavy handed approach. However, um, when you're starting off or if you're just demoing something or trying to create a prototype, this is a pretty easy way with no extra tooling, no extra libraries or any extra dependencies and you can start to get something that is at least approaching something that's, that's pretty sophisticated. Um, so when I don't need to do a whole bunch but I, or at least or when I need to at least keep things a little bit more organized than just throwing my styles directly into here, this is something that I like to just keep around. It's a nice tool. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend you using this and uh, across an entire application or anything like that. Um, but it's just something nice to know, and it's something nice for us to build off of for the next piece, which are the modules. All right, so this is the exciting part: the CSS modules. Um, so as you can see uh, over here in the directory structure, I've created a new paragraph component. Um, it's very simple. All it does is it just renders a just a, a p tag, a paragraph element. Um, I've got some text in there. Um, just using you know just a function we're not going with the whole class and everything because we're just gonna be playing around with styles we don't need anything crazy um, I've imported and imported it into the app component that we've been spending the rest of our time in um, so we're still pulling in app.css we're, we're still playing with the, um, the the other styles the other inline styles from the previous example and but the only difference is that now we have the paragraph component right down here so keeping it very basic for this just to show how much stuff is already built into Create React App and the bare minimum that you need to get started with this feature. Um, definitely not going into the full power and the capability of it, but this is just enough to get you started. So, all right, so for the first thing, we're not going to come in here and you know create a you know an object like this. No, we're not gonna do that. What we're instead what we're going to do is we're going to create a new file. We're gonna call it paragraph dot module dot CSS um, so this is where the dot module is important 
Um, what you're tapping into, and then this is what I said I was going to explain later on, what you're tapping into is this dot module and then your dot CSS extension. You're letting the pre-built webpack configuration that's built into create, create React app, you're letting that pre-built webpack configuration know that this is going to be a modularized style sheet. Um, so this is the, the quote unquote magic that I said was going is already done for you. The webpack configuration is already completely there to turn this dot module dot CSS into an actual CSS module. So go ahead and do that. And that's all that we need. So at this point we can start writing our own, we can start writing regular own CSS. Um, so see we have the full, uh, let's see, we'll do red stuff as well. So we have regular CSS syntax, it's very vanilla. Um, in fact, I'll pull it over here so that you can see exactly what's going to happen whenever we start doing this. So instead of creating styles right there inside of our component itself, what I'm, instead what I'm going to do, go ahead and save this. Um, see our new, our updated thing, we still have the old styles from the other example. Um, this is from the paragraph component, so just a P tag, just some text in it. We haven't really we haven't styled it yet. I'm going to import as styles. This could be any name, and we're going to pull in from the CSS file that we just created. So this is going to be paragraph dot module dot CSS. A little bit of an ugly name, but and it's no big deal. Um, it's actually kind of nice because we're doing this. You've got this naming convention where you've got a, a folder name, and then you've got the component that's following the exact same name as the folder, and then you have a CSS file that is following the name of the component and the folder. So without really knowing how the entire app is built out, you kind of have this built-in uh, nomenclature for being able to you know, kind of organically self-organize things. Not everybody's cup of tea, but I definitely like it, even if it is a bit verbose and possibly a bit redundant. So, okay. So we've imported the stock, we've imported our, our, our style sheet from the module.css. We've named it styles. Um, we still haven't used it yet, so let's go ahead and see. All right, so this time we're going to be able to take advantage of a class name because we've actually created a class. Um, so we'll say, and then we're still going to dot into it. So styles dot blue stuff. Now, if everything goes according to plan, the paragraph tag or the text inside the paragraph tag that we've um, included in this component should be styled according to the blue stuff um, class which is just make it blue and there it is okay cool so we've achieved essentially the same exact thing we've just kind of reorganized our uh, we've reorganized our code so what's the benefit to this well for that let's open dev tools and for dev tools I'm going to again use the element selector come over here and I'm going to try to make this um, let's see, I don't know if I can make this any bigger, but anyway, what you can see is that the class is actually paragraph, so that's the name of our component, blue stuff, that's actually the class name that we typed in, we, we wrote in our own style sheet, and then you've got this underscore, underscore, and then this hash. That right there, that is what the webpack, the pre-built webpack configuration has done for you to make this a my modularized CSS um, class name or a CSS module. So there's actually nothing that has changed to the CSS spec. So don't overthink this. Don't think that CSS has changed or that this is some sort of um, add-on to the CSS language or anything like that. No, this is really just sugar syntax. This is just some some automated um, organization, if you will. That's all that this is. We still have a regular CSS class um, and it's just automatically given this really uh, this this really easy name. Now you can get into the specifics of how this name has come up, you know, how this name is created. Obviously, paragraph is coming from our component, and blue stuff is coming from the class name that we've created. Um, this hash, there, there's a lot more. That that's that's really more for later when you're getting into custom webpack configurations. So, but so don't don't think about that too much. But this is what's going on, and this is what's actually creating the CSS modules. So from there, you know, you can really, if we wanted to do red stuff, you know, to use more of the, um, the other class that we wrote on this, we can do that sort of thing. And then now it's red. 
Okay, but, but here's what's cool. So what if our red stuff in the paragraph component, we don't want to change the name of the class, but we, won't, but we want it to be a different red, or we want to change the value uh, compared to the red that we put in the red stuff in the original app component. All right, so let's see. Um, so again, we want it to have the exact same class name, but two different values. This is typically where, if you're just using regular straight vanilla CSS, this is where you would start to roll, you know, kind of step on your own toes, or you would start to overwrite things. Um, instead, what you're going to see is this: where, this is where we're going to be able to have the same class name, but in separate components and have separate values. So we're actually going to be able to have modularized CSS. All right. So just to create a new, um, just get a different version of red. Um, so let's go ahead and highlight this. We're going to do red. Um, I'm going to throw it down to, I don't know, something else. This kind of pink-ish salmon color. Um, all right, copy that. doesn't really matter what value it is. Um, and then we're going to throw it here. So we're updating this value. Uh, double semicolon. We're updating this value inside of the paragraph.module.css. doesn't matter where we got it from. We're going to save that. And so this is called red stuff in the this style sheet, and then over here in the app.js, this is called red stuff as well. Um, but as you can see, we've got one shade of red and then a different shade of red. Two different shades of red, same exact name. Um, pop these open. And you can see that this right here, so it's it's changed. The hash changed. Um, the class changed. We didn't have to do any, you know, we, we didn't have to go rebuild or anything. This also happened with live reloading. So this is really, really cool. All right, so I've got one more thing set up for you guys. Um, the next step that I'm going to turn the, take this into is we're going to use this with SAS so that we have CSS modules with SCSS or SASE CSS. So yeah, um, the next piece that I'm going to introduce is basically um, SCSS modules also directly inside of Create React app. And the only thing we have to do is add one more package to the build. It's going to be very simple. I'm going to do npm install uh, node sass. So we have to install that. Okay, cool. So we've installed node sass. Uh, you know, nothing changes to the code as far as far as that's concerned. Um, so what what capability do we have now? Now that now that we've uh, added that package, well. Or we can, I have a couple more components that I've added up, uh, or I've added to the project, just to drive home this this example again. So I've got horizontal component and the vertical component. Uh, right now, I haven't created a style sheet for them yet. And do now is instead of adding uh, adding a dot module dot CSS, what we instead what we can add is we can add a let's see horizontal component dot module dot SCSS. Okay. Uh, and then since this is uh, sassy CSS or SAS, we can still write straight CSS. We don't have to immediately jump into the SAS um, language or anything like that. So we can. So I'm going to keep this um, fairly simplistic, and I'm going to go ahead and also add a file for vertical component or a style sheet for vertical component, the same exact way. Dot module dot SCSS. Okay. So horizontal, horizontal. Uh, put these back the same way so that we can kind of get that going. Um, pretty simple here. The vertical component has some text, says it's from that one, and the horizontal component has uh, pretty much the same text swapped out for the name. That the idea is that we want the vertical component to display vertically, and we want the horizontal one to display horizontally. Except um, we're going to use the same exact class name. Um, we're just going to swap the value a little bit. To show, um, to further show that we have, we still have the same CSS modules uh, feature, but now we're doing it with SAS or SCSS to, to be technical. Um, all right, so we're going to start in the vertical component. Come over here. We'll do, uh, we'll create a, a class called Special Display, and the display will be flex for flexbox, and then flex direction. We need to do this for um, to denote that this is a a column or that it's going to be vertical and then we'll again import the styles from the vertical component dot module dot the scss file now and style or the div I mean last name and we're going to do styles dot special display okay 
And let's see. I want to show that that works. And all right, so there we go. Okay, so the vertical component is vertical now. Let's go back and do the same thing for the horizontal component. Um, we're basically going to use the exact same thing from the vertical component style sheet, except we're going to do this for horizontal. Now, if you were actually doing this, um, you know, this would you would not copy and paste them like that. You would actually throw this into a mix-in and you would import the mix-in and all that sort of thing, but keeping it simple, so um, just going to stick with this. Also, when you're using Flexbox, the default flex direction is row. Um, so there's no reason, if this is the only thing that you're putting in here, there's no reason to, um, to explicitly type this out. Um, again, just driving the example home. Um, all right. So, and then back in the horizontal component, import the styles. Okay. And the class name, styles dot special display. Whoops. All right. Now, actually, we're probably not going to see anything different until we check uh, until we check Dev Tools. I'm sorry. So we saved all. Ah, okay. Except it moving over. Okay. So it moved over. So that's one side effect. One reason that we know that the class was applied. Um, we can also dive into Dev Tools, and we can use a little element selector here. We have all the individual spans from the vertical component, but then if we pop open the horizontal component. Here's the difference that we see. So over here, if I click on the vertical component, the special display class, and then we have our double underscore hash, and we see we've got the exact same CSS or the exact same styling that we applied to it in the source code. Flex, column, come down here to horizontal component, same exact name except the new SCSS modules feature. Um, you know, gave us this new class name of horizontal component, special display, all that stuff, and we have flex and row. Um, still spans, still the same exact class name, except we have different uh, scoped styles that were applied to two completely different components. So this is why I like using it, is the fact that I can basically copy and paste vanilla CSS, or if I'm using SAS or you know sassy CSS, if I'm using it in some other application, I can just pull that directly from another application and throw it right here in my you know brand new create react app, however I'm using it, whatever I'm whatever I'm building, I can move this back and forth. So this is not to say that CSS and JS or styled components or, or any other methodology that you have for, for styling your React applications um, this isn't really to say that anything is wrong or that, th or that this is more right. This is just a really cool way that um, I've been waiting on this feature for a, quite a long time and I like to see it here. And this is just my preference as of right now. Um, like I kind of said before at the, at, the, at the intro is you know, this styling and, and web design really isn't my strong suit. So anything that I can have to have the uh, kind of get both the best of both worlds of like the brand new tooling, but also keeping things kind of the way that they always have been without making too big of a compromise. That's something that that's the sweet spot that I really like to stay in. Um, something that I, you know, if I want to move all the styling from Create React app into whatever may come next, you know, whatever new thing that we all want to move on onto next as as web developers. I don't want to have to completely re-implement this exact same design and the exact same styles in the brand new application. Some people may say that this is overthinking it for way too much, that the entire thing is already going to be refactored by the time that you want to do that. This is just my preference. This is just the way that I like to use it. Um, it's not wrong or right, but that's kind of the biggest pro that I see for this. The, the biggest con that I see for this is that you still have to deal with the imports. You still have to think about how the styling is coming down, where you're going to define your variables. Um, I can see where it can be a little bit difficult to try to you know, overhaul this if you wanted to create a component that was, um, that was going to be reused all over the place. There might be quite a bit more boilerplate to try to have um, some default styles and then be able to add props and such. Um, to pull into it that you can't you can't really overwrite those very well. Um, 
so that's probably where CSS and JS are styled components. That's probably where those, those things shine. All right, that was CSS modules and then upgraded to SAS for so we have sassy CSS modules. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you learned something new. I hope everything uh, worked out. If you have any questions, um, please put the, drop those in the comments. Also, remember to hit that subscribe button. Uh, give me a like. If you didn't like the video, give me a dislike. And let me know why. Um, I would really like to continue making these videos. And if there's, any, if there's any improvements or suggestions, questions, comments, anything that you have, please let me know in the comment section down below. Um, I'll try to include also links to any articles that were um, that, that were useful for me down in the in the uh, in the description below as well. Um, this was something that was definitely a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be to get this working. This is relatively um, this is something that you have been able to do with Create React app for quite a while, but it did involve a lot more configuration and things on on, on your part. Um, previously and now with a newer version of Create React app this is something that is pretty much handled out of the box for you as well. Um, so again I hope you learned something new I hope you enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.